the first who is you, and there are all kinds of things that you need to to figure out and keep track of along the way in terms of the situation itself. Uh, I always like this quote from Alice in Wonderland. Begin at the beginning, the king said very gravely, and go on till you come to the end, then stop. Well, you know where the beginning is. That The beginning is, is the situation that you perceive to be a problem. Though, as is often our habit, we confuse the situation with the causes and the solution, and we get all wrangled up in a multitude of pieces that that are not really appropriate at the beginning. The best thing is is to figure out how to define the situation, and and actually pay attention to the assumptions that that we made when we defined the situation. But we have to make certain that we we don't try to understand what caused the situation at this point or what the solution to the situation is. We simply want to understand what is the situation, why is it that we perceive it to be a problem. And then it's appropriate to look at the, the behavior trends, those certain aspects of the environment which have evolved over time to cause the situation to be what it is at the moment. Most often we the situation appears as an event because we pay attention to lots of things in our lives, but there are far more things that we can pay attention to on an ongoing basis. So there are there are patterns of behavior which are evolving over time, even though we're not paying attention to them. And when some of them get to a point where they capture our attention, all of a sudden we get the sense that this is a problem that, that something really should be done about. And it appears as an event, but it's just not really. So to, to look at the relevant patterns of behavior that have led up to this situation is appropriate. Now, understanding at the outset what specifically which things we should pay attention to in terms of the patterns of behavior is not often easily understood. I mean, we might have a sense of some of them, but probably not all of them. This is another situation where, as I will continue to say, we, we have to operate under a, a trial and learning mode so that we investigate something and we learn something and we investigate something more. And it, it's a very recursive pattern of, of developing an understanding based upon investigating. So we sort of pick ourselves up by our bootstraps and, and work our way forward. It's also important to think about the implications of the situation if we didn't do anything about it. How would it unfold into the future? Is it really a situation that needs to be taken care of or is it, you know, not going anywhere? And the reason being, you know, this other quote from Alice in Wonderland, would you please tell me which way I ought to go from here? That depends upon where you want to get to. Alice says, I don't much care where. And the response was that it doesn't mat much matter which way you go. We often attempt to solve problems to simply return the situation to the way it was before it became a problem, and we miss a great opportunity to figure out how to improve on the situation so that tomorrow is better than yesterday. The One way to do that is to think about what I call an ideal alternative. If I could, in fact, construct anything that made sense, what would be a far better alternative to the current situation? The, the, the requirement is that it has to be something that is doable within the realm of technology and resources. I mean, you, you, it doesn't make sense to define an ideal alternative that requires time travel or teleportation or those kinds of things. It, it has to be doable. And, and then in addition to this, it's appropriate to solicit multiple perspectives from other people simply to uncover those perspectives that you, on your own, didn't think to think of. So this is a, a lot of things to do, and the question is, as I'm doing this, how do I keep track of all of this? Well, the, the, the approach is that from the situation, reality itself is extremely complex and has more interactions in it than we can make meaning out of. So that 
we use the situation as a point of focus to help us develop a set of relevant relationships, a model, if you will, which are those set of interactions which are associated with the situation that that we're trying to understand. Now, again, this developing this set of relationships is another one of those trial and learning situations where um, you you establish the the set of relationships that you think you understand and and you think about it and you investigate and you evolve it and you talk to other people about it and they ask you questions and it evolves and and you continue to work on it the idea is that this set of relationships will is intended to promote understanding and when you get it right um, it promotes insights all of us there's that aha moment about oh this is what's happening in this environment because of all of these relationships that are interacting simultaneously. Now, the, the difficulty that people most often find with developing relationship models is that that they're concerned about where to start. And and I actually had this problem for years in that, that when I set out to develop a relationship model, I wanted to make sure that I got it right. So I wanted to start in the right place. And I had a blank piece of paper, and I wasn't sure where I should start, which which sort of precluded me starting. And because I didn't start, I continued to have a blank piece of paper, and I was actually getting nowhere. Finally, I realized that it doesn't matter where I start. I can't get it right the first time. It's one of those trial and learning scenarios where I have to do something to learn something to do something better. So the answer was just begin to develop a relationship model. Put the things on paper or in an application or someplace that defines what it is that you're understanding in terms of the way that that things relate to each other and it's you will probably surprise yourself how easy it is to develop a relationship model once you quit worrying about getting it right and just take the nike approach just do it so what you what you're attempting to uncover by doing the relationship model is to understand that set of interactions that appear to be relevant to this situation and of those relationships which ones do you have influence over which ones are actually relevant to the situation and who might the appropriate collaborators be to work with you to identify or for those aspects of the environment or the situation which are outside of your area of influence. And once you identify the collaborators, then you can collectively begin to work on understanding the situation and continuing to solicit multiple perspectives and continuing to sort out the various and sundry relationships that are responsible for the situation and what the appropriate ideal alternative is. And so I continue to say that this is this is really a very recursive process in that you you do a little, learn a little, do a little, learn a little, and you keep continue to learn your way forward based upon your own thoughts and your interactions with other people. The one thing that I would offer you though is that as you develop the relationship model and go to present it to other people in the hopes that they can help you better understand or or improve on the relationship model itself you present this relationship model to other people from the perspective of sincerely inviting them to help you better understand as opposed to trying to impress them with how smart you are, because actually they're not interested in how smart you are. They're mostly interested in how smart they are. So you give them an opportunity to show how smart they are so that you ask them about 
the relationships that you have established and do they make sense and and what relationships have you left out or which relationships have you included that you shouldn't have included so that by asking them questions you you sort of bring them into the problem solving situation as opposed to pushing them away and in the next segment we'll go ahead and, and investigate how you actually create a, a relationship model in insight maker so take care and i'll see you in the next video bye